Hey, how's it going? Hope you've been doing well. I realized I wasn't gonna have time for like a proper video this weekend, so I'm gonna try and film just some random clips, random footage and put it together to make a video of the current happenings and what's going on and yeah, whatever. I'm about to head out soon to Triple Out Designs opening store in Boulder. Uh, I, I mentioned it on my Facebook page, nobody said they were gonna go, so I, I was gonna go at nine, but I have too many holsters to make, so I probably won't end up going till 10, which doesn't really matter because by the time this video is published, I will have already gone and come back and whatever. So I don't even know why I'm mentioning it. What else am I gonna put in this video? My brother got a Diamondback cover, so I have a Diamondback cover, I love it. I've talked about it a lot of, you know, you've seen it in videos. Uh, my brother had a backflip cover for a handful of years and it finally kind of like started pooping out, vinyl started peeling up and he was happy with it while he had it. Nothing against backflip covers, you know, whatever, but he wanted something a little more heavy duty. He really liked my diamond back, so he picked one up. So I'll probably show some quick install of that. I went over and helped him install it uh, earlier this week. And yeah, that was that. Uh, right now I'm putting together a bunch of holsters. So I need to get all these holsters finished assembling and packaged up and mailed before I head to Triple Out Designs. So this is what's going on here. Maybe your holster is in the bunch. Maybe it is. There's some cool ones. This is a APLC holster. Kuyu Verde, I think. Verde, yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, I was gonna show some stuff, holster stuff. So I mentioned earlier we've been working in Fusion to design some custom holsters. I bought a couple CNC's. This is one, this is the box that my dog ate up of my Shape Yoko 3 and some other random like winter stuff. Uh, what do I have? This video is gonna be random, I said. Here's a little snow, cheap little snow shovel I bought uh, to have as an extra. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Oh, so also, yeah, so, sorry. It's, it's kind of early still and I'm kind of out of it, but also, I 3D printed some of my gun molds. So what you do is, this one, which is milled, is what I actually use to vacuum form the Kydex on. So not all of my, not all of my holsters are like this. I'm moving towards this. It's a slow process because there's a lot of design that goes into this and a lot of prototyping and a lot of testing and I'm already, I already have so much to do that I don't have a ton of time to do that, but I am slowly transitioning over to those uh, and then, we have 3D printed, so I don't use this to actually make the molds, but when I'm assembling the holsters, the two sides I'm putting together, I use this to keep everything in line when I'm drilling holes and stuff like that. So the old way, I don't know, and I still do this for almost all my holsters, is you have like, you know, your gun mold with a bunch of like popsicle sticks and stuff. So this is behind the scenes. Most holster shops, a lot of them, are gonna be using something like this. Some kind of gun mold that they customize to make however they want. So, m trying to move away from that slowly but surely to cust super custom exactly how I want it. I get in there in Fusion, actually my brother, but I get there with him and we design. I'm like, tweak that and change this and move that and add this. And then we get something that we can 3D print and mill and it's cool. Yeah, so 3D printing. 3D printing is cool. So this, you can make like practical stuff. Like this is a little like storage container that I've been using to hold all the screws and stuff that I use to assemble these holsters. And that's neat. Um, I'll talk about 3D printing stuff later in another video. I got my slide back from Jaegerworks. So this is my P10C slide. It's not assembled, you know, not, none of the internals or sights or anything is on it is on it yet. I wasn't sure what I wanted to paint this, so I said, yeah, just bead blast it or whatever and send it back to me raw. But man, I kind of really like the raw look of this in steel, so I may just clear coat this and call it done. I don't know, what do you guys think? Give me some feedback. I have an HB Industries trigger I need to install. Maybe I'll do some stippling. I'm not sure. Give me some feedback. Also, tomorrow I'm gonna go do some shooting. Primarily, I'm gonna be shooting a bunch of my M&P compact because I haven't been able to get out and shoot this thing yet. So probably I'll film. I don't know. Stay tuned for that. 
All right, I need to finish this up. I'll try and film some other random stuff throughout the day, and I'll try and put together a video, and yeah, I'll try and get that video out at some point. So here's the backflip that started kind of falling apart, uh, and the vinyl on the other side, but it treated him well for like five years, but he decided that when he got a new one, he would upgrade to a diamond back. So what I found from installing my other cover is that before we put the brackets on the center piece, I would say it's almost easier to put the front and back and kind of situate it where it's supposed to be on the bed and then put the clamps on. Because the clamps kind of, even when you put them on loose, they kind of prevent it from moving. So it's not easy to situate it. So I put the clamps on after. So on the F-150, these, well, on all Diamondback covers, this is what holds it closed. And on the F-150, they say you kind of, you have this plastic thing, supposed to cut it off and then mount this. But we're gonna just try and put it in there and see how it works. On the Tacoma, I kind of think is a little nicer. Sorry, it's real dark back here, but we have this system. Let me get a flashlight out. This system that goes into the rail and then the bar goes into that. And it's kind of nice because it's angled. So it kind of, the bar hits it and it actually sucks the cover down. So I kind of like the Tacoma mounting system a little better. So this rail will come up under here. So what I would do is pre-tighten these nuts pretty tight but we can still adjust this up and down and then when you're ready to you put pressure on this to get it as tight as you want it to be and then you tighten those nuts to put that rail up tight against the truck bed rail thing. So when you're putting these crossbars in, you wanna kinda of put some weight on top. So when you're doing it with two people, the front one's a little, or when you're doing it with one person, the front one's a little more of a pain, but with two people, you can just hold this down, one person can, while the other is tightening them from the inside. Uh, when I did it, I installed mine by myself. I just put some heavy things up on top here to kinda of compress it while I was doing that step. So next you'll install the little hydraulic piston thingies and they just press fit right on the uh, black tube portion goes up and they're quick release so when you want to take these off you just kind of like bend that little part back and comes right off yeah. so you can also get the optional cross bin that just really rests in there and has a little cutout for the locking rod to go in. So that gives you a big storage bin up front that doesn't really take away your lower portion of your bed space, but if you had something tall that was taller than that that needed to go full length, then that does obviously need your space. But, comes right out. Uh, it's not bolted in or anything, so if you need to remove it, it's pretty easy to. So the bin, is this whole thing. And if you saw my Diamondback truck cover review, you'll be familiar with it. It's three separate compartments, one big one in the middle, and then these two little ones on the sides. And in mine, it's where I keep my get home bag and crowbar and axes in there and some other stuff. Well, that's it. Now we're Diamondback brothers and actual brothers too. Pretty cool. Except I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. His is the HD 
minus the SE. So what that means is mine can handle 400 pounds roughly on top and his can handle 1600 pounds and it has more of these tie downs. It has what? 4, 8, 12. 12 tie downs and mine only has 4 so more tie downs and more braces underneath. So while we're in here actually this is where I have my CNC set up. So one is the Shapey Yoko and then one is this little China CNC thing uh, that I got first to just kind of mess around with some stuff and the uh, CNC computer over here. So yeah, we're just kind of getting into it. So don't have, you know, really high-end stuff, but this is cool. It's cool. Fun to kind of learn on and do some little things. Uh, been making holster molds on it and we'll be doing other stuff. So yeah. So I'm back from Triple Lot Design. I forgot to bring my camera and so I forgot to film. It was a cool store, cool little space in Boulder. Uh, I don't go to Boulder that often, but yeah, seemed like a cool little store. Uh, good place if you're in Colorado, if you need to go check out some of their gear in person. Uh, now I'm back home. And I forgot I wanted to paint my house today. So there's this portion of my house. It's like an extension, really. It's like where my sunroom is. It's really my favorite part of the house from the inside. But from the outside, I hate that it's white. It just kind of like, looks like a mobile home or something. Nothing wrong with mobile homes. Anyways, right here is like a little gray part that I painted to see how it looks. Uh, I think I'm gonna paint the whole thing that gray. And my parents are gonna come help me paint. So that's actually what I'm gonna do today. And maybe if I have time to film the rest of this video, I will. Maybe I'll time lapse a painting. Uh, I just sprayed it down though with water to clean it off like power, pressure washed it. So I'm not sure if it'll be dry enough to paint, but I think it will. So I'll probably paint it. Talk about a random video. Trey, Trey, come. Hi, bud. Hi, Trey. High five. Good boy. So it's not quite done, but got pretty close. I think it looks way better than the white did anyway. I don't know, hopefully. I think it looks a little more modern or something. Not quite done, gotta paint some more trim and touch up a couple spots, but that's where some of my weekend went. Good morning. What's the next day? This is like a video diary, really. Is that what a vlog is? A video, I know it's like a video log? I, don't, I realize I don't even know what vlog stands for. Is it just a video diary? Anyway, I'm out here at a spot that Philip and I like shooting a lot of the time. And I realize, I'm not sure if this is where I'm supposed to meet him, because he just said, all right, cool, meet you at the, at the cool spot. But I don't know what the cool spot is, because this spot's pretty cool, but we sometimes shoot it in other spots that's pretty cool too. Uh, I brought a bunch of guns to shoot today. The M&P Compact Glock 19 Gen 5. This video is really turning into something pretty lame. And I don't know whether I'm going to put it together or not. But since I haven't filmed anything else this weekend, I probably will put it together. And it'll just be what it is. I went to the gas station on the way up because I was going to get something healthy. Like a little like fruit smoothie type thing. Um... And instead, I got some Muddy Buddies and, uh, and some Pringles. So, yeah. Drone.
stone case I like because it's just super compact extra battery drone controller some extra little things the charger it can fit some other little things in there it's not hard but it's like you know this kind of material all right so just as I was leaving I see Philip rolling up so we'll see Philip has a forerunner but he also has this pretty sweet tundra did you want to shoot here at the other spot okay well, I don't know. I was like, you said shoot at the cool spot. This is the cool spot? Cool spot? Yeah. Alright. Philip got a new setup. G20 with the uh, Gunfighters Inc. Kanai. Yeah. Is these called? Gen 2. Gen 2. So these are holsters with like this kind of stretchy material for like, you know, backcountry fly fishing or hunting or whatever. That's what they're geared towards mostly, right? Yeah. I see him with like helicopter pilots and stuff. He posts on his page. I saw that. Thing. So he picked one of these up for when he's out fly fishing so he doesn't get attacked by a moose or something. Pretty nice. I can conceal a little bit better. So here's my Zev with the mad custom paint job. It's pretty. Yeah, it is. It's pretty. Did a good job, mate. I'll send mine in. cover uh, slammed it in as hard as I could worked fine ejected it slammed it in as hard as I could again and it worked fine so I'm just trying to test that out quite a bit so this is the uh carrying a gun like the compact which I might consider I try to shoot a bunch of random rounds through it so lately I've been shooting a lot of chief but I brought some HST which is my carry stuff some freedom 147 grain which is a little lighter and then some federal uh, 115 grain so I'm just gonna shoot a variety through this and see if it eats it all up Pretty horrible shooting for only like eight or eight or nine yards, but uh, looks like I'm shooting left with it for what that's worth.
problems. We're stepping on it. your gun with a bunch of different ammo really test it with your carry ammo so we're gonna send 10 through the M&P here it's in the full size 17 round mag though so This tree's getting shot up. This tree's. Anyway, shooting down trees. I've talked to Forest Service Rangers and Sheriffs. This is the number one reason shooting places get shut down. Trash, like that monitor up there, and shooting down trees. So this spot is on its way to getting shut down. Thanks guys. So I'm halfway through filming this other random video and I realized I wanted to talk about what happened at the ranch today. I'm wearing these sunglasses because I'm looking in the screen so much. Uh, Casey Neistat once said he wears sunglasses so he's not always looking weird like looking in the camera because you can't see his eyes. So that's what I'm doing. So instead you get to look at this funky reflection of the camera in front of this monitor. Anyway, so shooting the guns, M&P Compact, loved it like I thought I would. Uh, I think I probably will change out this trigger because I don't love the trigger. Sorry, this gun is clear. People um, are giving me a hard time about doing stuff like this with the gun on camera. So I'm going to try and not do that as much because I don't want to look like an amateur hour. I actually do know how to handle firearms. Anyway, this gun is clear. MP Compact. I liked it a lot. Uh, one thing that was unfortunate, I was doing a lot of drills, seeing like how the reloads went. I was trying to see if the 17 round mag malfunctioned when I just rammed it all the way up there because people said you really need to use that little grip insert because you don't want to over insert the mags. I really tried to over insert the mags and I couldn't get any kind of malfunction. Uh, I shot, uh, I don't know how many, I don't. I think less than a thousand, maybe like 500 rounds. Uh, primarily Chief, Chief ammo is what I've been shooting lately. I'll link to them below. Uh, Remanufactured ammo, 147 grain, really solid stuff. Uh, has been running really well. Uh, I put all kinds of rounds through this. My defensive ammo, 147 grain HST, uh, factory loads, uh, reloads, freedom reloads, chief reloads, everything. Uh, just ate it right up. Had no, no malfunctions whatsoever in this. Shot really well. The thing that I didn't like is I seem to be riding the slide release. So I do have a high grip on my guns. I do. Uh, maybe abnormally high, but a lot of people grip it pretty high. And even though I grip it below the slide stop let's see how much we get focused it is textured so even though i'm gripping it like this it's enough to ride it so where the slide's not locking back so if i want to carry this gun and really become proficient with it i'm really going to need to spend some time uh either adjusting my grip or just really getting used to that slide stop because i don't like riding slide stops I don't do it with Glocks, but I do do it with some other guns. So if the M&P is ever gonna be my carry, I really wanna work out the uh, slide stop dealio. 
Everything else with it, really, really great, ran really smooth. I realized I'm pretty rusty at shooting with irons because all the guns I've been shooting lately, including my carry gun, have RMRs. So it was not like a relearning curve, obviously, because I still know how to shoot guns, but I certainly need to train with irons more often maybe. And I just haven't because my carry gun has optics and I like shooting optics. So I was just shooting optics all the time. Uh, and now switching back to irons, which you know, I may put an RMR on this thing, I probably will. Uh, but anyway, sh switching back to irons took a little bit of getting used to. So that was good. Gen 5 Glock, let's show. Ooh, nice orange follower, we are clear. Gen 5 Glock, I, I liked it a lot as well. I mean, it shoots just like a Glock, which is great. Uh, I really did like the flared Magwell when I was shooting. I like how it, I like how it kind of like keeps my hand kind of tucked in there. Granted, if your hand is different size, which obviously your hand's different size, if your hand's too big, I could see how it might get annoying, but for me, it's perfect. I wish it did flare out in the front because I think if it had this little front flare right here, it would be, Oh, I would love the grip. Now I thought I would hate this. I thought this would get really, really annoying. I didn't really notice it to be completely honest. It didn't really affect me much. A uh, couple hundred rounds through this gun probably. Uh, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't bug me. If I had a smaller hand and my pinky fell like right in there or something, maybe it would, but how I grip it normally like this, it didn't bug me as much as I thought it would. So that's something to note. Everything else, I mean, ran just like a Glock, so. Not really much to report on the Gen 5. Shot well. Uh, again, like I said, none of the guns I shot today, I didn't have a single malfunction. I did have one. So I brought with me a handful of just random ammo that I had lying around. So I don't know what ammo it was, if it was a reload or not, because I, I didn't pay close enough attention. I should have. I just kind of like chucked it. Uh, but I had a full power. It looked like a full power primer strike. But the the ammo didn't go. So I had one malfunction, but I don't think it was gun induced because the, the primer hit looked really good. So other than that, no problems with these guns. Just great time, great time out shooting. All right, back to your normal scheduled, whatever it is that I'm filming right now. Woo, it was a busy weekend. I got most of the things I wanted to get done, done. Was able to do some shooting, was able to do some things around the house. And after I make this video and upload it, maybe I'll probably work on some holsters. Oh, I was gonna bench press today. So I just got 120 pound dumbbells. Got ankle weights to add onto it because I want to incrementally increase my bench press. And I didn't know how because I didn't want to buy a bunch more heavy dumbbells because they're pretty expensive. Maybe I should film myself trying to bench press that with the ankle weights because I might drop it on my face. And I might die. And if that was on camera, that might be cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is one of the worst ideas probably I've ever had. So the weight strap isn't long enough obviously because they're ankle weights to go around this whole thing. These are big, these are 120s. So I used this little Velcro cable tie organizer to make it the rest of the distance. And I'm probably gonna drop these on my face, so. Don't try this at home. Well, mom, if I drop this on my face, I love you. actually worked all right. All right, earlier I said I'm gonna talk about a bunch of random gear. So as like a gear review channel, I get offers for free gear every day. Every day, companies are emailing me, wanting me to get products. A lot of them are like random Chinese this and that that I don't care about, so I just say no or don't reply sometimes if I forget. Uh, and sometimes I say, sure, you can send it to me, 
I'm probably not gonna do a video on it, but I'll give you some feedback, whatever. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. These products, products that I don't wanna make their own video about, but they're kinda of nifty, and if, if you're into them, check it out. If not, don't check it out. You absolutely do not have to buy these products. I don't get anything from it. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about some random stuff. And if you care about like random little gear things, I'm, I, I've, I'm sent a lot of stuff. I only talk about the stuff. I only make videos about stuff I really like. And now I'm only going to talk about stuff that might be a good fit for some of you, and but I might not really find a use for it. All right, so wallets. I'm actually going to do a future video about wallets. Uh, a lot of people said to get a Trayvax. I picked up a Trayvax. A lot of people said to pick up a flip side. I picked up a flip side. It's got like fancy internal organization. This wallet looked pretty cool. It's basically uh, a wallet where it helps like flip out your things like that. Uh, I'll talk about that and then I'll talk about the Ridge, but I already did a video on that. So I'm going to compare kind of like these four kind of cool wallets. These three anyway were uh, suggested to me by all of you guys. So I picked them up and this one was sent to me, but it was kind of a cool wallet. So I'm going to throw that in the mix. Another wallet, I guess it's a money clip. I should put on some sunglasses, right? to be like Casey Neistat so I'm not looking in my screen all the time like a weirdo. Maybe I'll do that. Is this cool? I don't think it is. I think it probably, it's probably dumb. I probably look dumb. You can see the reflection. I'm using my big ultra wide monitor with a white background to illuminate me because I didn't feel like setting up lighting. I do love these sunglasses though. People sometimes comment and make fun of me and say they're women's sunglasses. They're men's, but they might not be for you. I don't like the more narrow ones. I feel like they make my face look funny because I have like a round face and these just fit me well. Anyway, I think I talked about the lenses before. Uh, it's not really worth showing them. These are Revan optics. So I got these lenses. I shoot with these lenses. I wear them all the time. They're polarized. I still love them. I just thought I'd talk about them because as I'm wearing them, if you have polarized lenses and you look at some screens, it kind of goes crazy. So my side monitor is like going crazy whenever I tilt my head, but this monitor actually is staying the same. I don't know what it is. I'll have to research more about LCD tech, like what LCDs react different, because I know like some phones, if you look at them with polarized lenses, you kind of can't see, and then sometimes you gotta like turn it, but all right, I got sidetracked. Oh, so wallets, this is a little money clip that I thought was neat. Not neat enough to make a full video on, but we'll put in some dummy cards here. So it can hold a bunch of cards plus money and be relatively thin. Anyway, I thought this was kind of cool. I don't, I don't love it. It's like, a, feels a little, my cards aren't too secure in there, but I think it's relatively cheap. I'll go ahead and link to it below. I forget what it's like. I don't even know, carbon life. A little money clip, if you're into that, carb I know people are into their carbon fiber and it's real carbon fiber. The listing I think says it has RFID protection, but I don't think native regular carbon fiber does. So I don't know if this is something special or whatnot. Uh, this wasn't sent to me at all, <laughs> but I showed this and people asked about it before. It's a little, uh, let me put some cards in here. It's one of these little wallets. It doesn't work as good as the Ridge wallet, though it uses a you know similar mechanism to where your cards are wedged in between here. And it's basically kind of like a multicam clone and it's super cheap and it's aluminum. Uh, what I didn't like is I think over time, it's aluminum on the inside here. I think it'll scratch your cards over time. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. Whereas with something like the Ridge, it has a, can't really see it, but it has plastic insert. So it's metal, but it has plastic insert here. So that protects your stuff and makes it not scratch. Uh, so yeah, those are two random wallets. This I actually just bought, but a lot of people were asking about it. So I figured I would uh, say it. I'm gonna link to all this stuff below in the video description. Uh, if you feel like clicking them, click them. If not, whatever. This company called Keeper sent me these. They're basically magnetic gun mounts. Uh, I don't know that I'll be using them anywhere, but I thought maybe you could use them like, you know, obviously put it under a desk or something if you need to like 
have a gun there under a desk mounted either like a secret gun or something i'm not a huge fan of guns that aren't in holsters but maybe some people are so pretty straightforward four screws keeper you can check it out this is a random device it's charged it has a battery and what it is my dog goes crazy because it makes a really high-pitched noise that you might be able to hear. But, basically it makes this little, you know, thing. I think you could probably hear it in the mic. Let's try and catch something on fire. This might be a bad idea. I should probably have a fire extinguisher on hand. Alright, anyway, that that works. Hopefully I don't have a smoke detector in here. So this is, I forget, it's called EDC Core. I'll link to it. So it's, anyways, it's like a windproof fire starting alternative, an alternative to a lighter or matches or whatever for people that like gadgets. It's basically like a little, little taser. I haven't put my finger in there because I don't want to. So I don't really know what it does, but it will start a fire. This might get a little dangerous. So I've been sent a few, a couple of these. Uh, here's one. What this is, is a USB cigarette lighter charger, but also it's a, uh, like a safety tool, kind of a, an emergency tool. So this has a little seatbelt cutter in it. And this in here, kind of like the rescue hook, which I'm a fan of, has a little glass breaker. This company, I'll link to it again, sent me a piece of glass. I don't know anything about this glass. If it's regular glass, it'll break easy and it's kind of pointless. But if it's like safety rated glass, like a window's made out of, then they're tough to break. And this may be a valid, legitimate thing. So I'm gonna point my camera down and I'm gonna break this and it's probably gonna be a bad idea. But I'm gonna, hopefully it doesn't go everywhere. You know what? I'm gonna keep it in this little bag to try and contain the mess. All right, looks like it's a little dark but I think you guys will get the idea. So this thing is gonna push down and then it breaks the glass. Here we go, one, two, three. Okay, well it did shatter the glass into a million little pieces. So that's how that works. I thought it was a, I thought it was a kind of cool idea, but yeah, it looks like it's Kotec. I'm not sure. Again, like I said a million times, I'll link to all this stuff if you're curious below. I think the bag method, keeping it in the bag, was actually pretty smart. I think it contained all the little pieces. I bought something, but I thought it was cool. So this is a power device. So you guys have seen my recent camping videos, right? Where I was using this Goal Zero, 150 watt Yeti. Goal Zero now makes lithium ones, but they're kind of expensive, but those old ones are just lead acid or whatever. So the, the batteries aren't really as good. You can't really like fully deplete them. So you have 150 watt hours, which really you have like half of that because they don't let the battery discharge all the way. This is lithium. So this is like 350 watt hours basically. And you can use all of that because lithiums can handle being fully depleted and it's light and it's compact and it's small and it has a flashlight on it that I'll never use. Anyway, this is a new pickup that I'll be testing out and using in the future, but I just got it. So I was kind of excited about it. So uh, yeah, I'll link to that. I think, it, I think I actually saw something. It was on my wish list, and I think it might be on sale right now. If it is, I'll let you guys know. So other stuff coming up, I'm about to ship my AR off to get it Cerakoted. Uh, I think I'm gonna do that in Multicam Black. I did a little uh, question on what I should do. I, I asked a question on Instagram about my uh, CZP10C, which is just raw steel right now, what it should be painted. And overwhelming majority of comments said Multicam Black. I'm doing my AR Multicam Black. I'm still not sure what I'm gonna do on my P10C. I soon am gonna send my M&P off to get some slide milling done and RMR cut out for this puppy because I just, I want to. Uh, I'm gonna have Innovative Gunspider Solutions do it because they're working on the M&P 2.0 compacts and they do some sick cuts. So stay tuned for that. I'll probably send that out soon. All right, guys. Man, I do. I feel really weird wearing sunglasses, but uh, I also feel really weird always looking into the, the screen. So 
I don't know. I should probably put the chrome lenses back in so you get like a full on, full on mirror shot. Uh, what else, what else? I'm gonna be, I've been asked so many times to do like a, a tactical jeans comparison. So I'm getting a handful, sorry, I'm clicking this thing in the background, so if that's coming through, my bad. I'm picking up a bunch of jeans, uh, 511 Defender Flex, which I already own, Tactical Distributors, uh, I've had the McQuaid jeans and reviewed them already, but I recently got the Standard Ground jeans, which are really awesome. Uh, people have told me about Oxcart jeans. I'm going to pick up a pair of those. Uh, I don't know what else. I want to do this video pretty quick, but let me know in the comments below if there's like a tactical gene that you know has tactical features that you think I should toss into the mix uh, and I'll try and pick a pair of them up to to get into that video. And I really think that's all that I wanted to talk about in this series of random video snippets that span the course of like a couple days now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw throw these clips together and upload it and it'll be the most random video that I've ever put and it'll probably be pretty long because I don't want to take a whole lot of time trying to make it short. So if you stuck with me to the end, cool. Uh, do you like these kind of videos? They're kind of a pain in the butt to make because I've, you know, it's taken like two days to make. Uh, I need to get better at making videos so it doesn't take so much time, but I'll work on it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. As always, I hope you're great. I hope you have a great day, night, weekend, week, whatever, uh, and yeah. Comment below, like the video if you liked it, get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. And I always like hearing feedback on, you know, what future gear you want me to review, feedback on the gear I have reviewed, what will make my videos better, what will make reviews better, what you want to know about. Uh, so let me know. I do read most of the comments and I do take them to heart and I do try and make improvements on them. Like when people say, don't wave your guns around, even though I just wave my gun around, I'll try not to do that in future videos so I'm more professional. <sighs> Alright, take care.